Well, good morning and welcome to our 10 o'clock online service coming to you from the church in Wortley and Farnley. My name's Chris and it's wonderful to be with you this morning as we gather together to worship God, hear from the Bible and pray together. I pray that this morning you will encounter the risen Lord Jesus wherever you are. The wonderful thing about worshipping a God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit and sends his spirit to be with us is that we can meet with God wherever we are. We begin as we always do with our acclamation and then our first song of worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so we sing together this morning, Great is Thy Faithfulness. <laughs>
What a fantastic hymn to begin our time with together, reminding ourselves of God's faithfulness to us. Whatever we're going through, whatever we've done, God is faithful to us. And yet we are sometimes unfaithful to him. We don't love him with all our hearts. We don't obey him with all our might. We don't serve him with all our mind. And so we come now to say sorry. And so we come to pray together our um, confession this morning. I've lost it. I've lost my confession. I'm really sorry. I did have a confession ready to go, but I have managed to lose it. Here we are. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess we have failed you as did your first disciples. We ask for your mercy and your help. Our selfishness betrays you. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. We fail to share the pain of your suffering. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. We run away from those who abuse you. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. We are afraid of being known to belong to you. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. And so may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, keep you in life eternal. Amen. So we now have our reading from the Bible. It's from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. And it's read for us by Fiona. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good work, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Thank you, Fiona. Well, a big passage here this morning, a whole chunk of stuff to unpack, to think about, to consider how it helps point us to Jesus, what it tells us about God, what it tells us about us, and what it tells us about how we should live. Last week we were looking at Ephesians 1 and we were thinking about how we have been chosen for adoption to sonship, that God knows you and has chosen you to be his son, to be his heir, to receive everything that he has. We were asking ourselves the question, who are you? And our base core, at the base of our identity, at the core of everything we are, is as a chosen, adopted son of God. But today also tells us a bit more about who we were. If we are right now uh, chosen for adoption uh, for, as sons of God, as heirs of God, who we were before that, who we were before we were in Christ Jesus, is really also important to consider because it tells us where we've come from. You can't know where you're going if you don't know where you've come from. You can't work out where you want to get to if you don't know where you've come from, if you don't know the start of your journey. And Paul, at the start of Ephesians 2, tells us where we were. And it's quite stark reading. As for you, this is verse one. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Paul doesn't mince his words here. Paul doesn't shine the uh, shine the kind of uh, excrement, as it were. You were dead in your transgressions and sins. You were dead. You had no hope. There was nothing in you that was alive. You were dead. 
in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live in when you followed the ways of the world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. You were dead. You had no hope. There was no life. There was just death and darkness and destruction from when, from, uh, because of not being in Jesus. It's because of being in Jesus that we are chosen as a, for adoption as heirs of God. But before we were in Jesus, we were dead. We weren't alive, we were dead. I wonder what that strikes you as. I wonder how that hits you to be dead. And it goes on. All of us also lived among them as one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Not only were you dead in your transgressions and sins, you were deserving of God's wrath. You were deserving of the punishment of God for your transgressions and sins. Not only are you not alive, not only are you dead, but you also deserve God's wrath because of your transgressions and sins. To be unforgiven, to not be in Jesus is serious. They say that um, it's not a good idea to encourage people into the kingdom of heaven with uh, telling them that without Jesus, they're, they're dead, they're deserving of wrath, they're going to hell. But this is the reality of how Paul writes. This is the reality of what Paul says. This is the reality of those who perish apart from Jesus, who don't know Jesus. This is where they're going. This is what happens if you die without trusting Jesus and receiving his forgiveness. You were dead and you were deserving of wrath. You were dead and you were deserving of wrath. It's a bit of a downer, isn't it, for a Sunday morning? Bit of a bummer, bit of a, uh, an unfortunate uh, message to have to preach. But... There's always a but. And the but in this one is big. The but in this passage is huge. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. It is by grace you have been saved. You were dead. But because of Jesus' great love, you are now alive with Christ. You were dead. You are alive with Christ. You were deserving of wrath, but it's by grace that you have been saved. Death to life, wrath to grace. And it keeps on going. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Dead and deserving of wrath. And now we are seated in the heavenly realms with Jesus Christ. In order that in the coming of ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace. Because of Jesus' great love, we have been transferred from death into life, from deserving of wrath to receiving his grace. How do we get this? How do we get this? Is it because we try hard? Is it because we push hard? Is it because we earn our, our salvation? Is it because you're a nice person? And so God goes, ah, oh, actually, they probably don't deserve death. Is it because we do charity work? We give money to the, cr uh, to the crypt? Is it because you come to church and you help out? Is it because you watch the online services? So God must love you? No. Verse 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And it is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one could boast. God gives it to you as a gift. He gives it to you as a gift to freely receive forgiveness and salvation because of Jesus' death and resurrection. I've been thinking about how to illustrate this story, this um principle that we were dead in our sins and now we're alive in Christ and the best way that I can think of describing it is like this uh, when I was uh, about 17 I did my gold duke of Edinburgh expedition uh, we we're walking around Scotland and uh, I was there with about five other friends of mine it was a group of six and we were walking so it was a four-day expedition uh, if you've done your gold duke of Edinburgh you'll know this about a four-day expedition and you have to carry everything with you, um, your tent, your food, your water, uh, your cooking equipment, clothes, all that kind of stuff. And we were walking on about day three. We had accumulated quite a large amount of rubbish by this point. You know, pasta um, sauces, uh, you, you know, food wrappers, that sort of thing, gas canisters that we'd um, finished. 
and it was heavy and it felt like we didn't need it. And so I made a bit of a mistake and I decided to bury it in the Scottish National Park, which you're not supposed to do. It's really, really bad. Don't do it. But I thought I'd gotten away with it. I buried it. I buried it. No one will find it. And even if they do find it, like what, what, whatever. Um, a couple of weeks later, me and my friends were summoned to the headmaster's office. And on the desk of the headmaster's office was the rubbish that we had buried, that I had buried. You might be wondering, how did they know it was yours? Was someone following you and they uh, just posted it to the headmaster? No, not quite. I made a bit of a, well, not only was my mistake burying this rubbish, but uh, the mistake in uh, sort of trying to get away with it was that I put our route map, our route card um, for uh, the previous day in the rubbish bag that I buried. And on that route card, it had our names and our school's name. There was no denying that this mess spread on the headmaster's desk was mine and my friends. Our names were there on the top of the sheet. Chris Balding, Alex, Lawrence, Max, Mohammed, Jasper. There on the headmaster's desk. We couldn't deny it. Our mess, our problem, our rubbish that we had tried to bury and forget about and hope no one found was there in front of us with our names on it. Undeniable. We deserved punishment for it. We deserved whatever was coming to us for it. We couldn't deny it. We had done wrong, we'd been found out, and our names were literally signed on it. Now here's what Jesus does. Our mess, our lives are spread across the desk in front of a good God, a perfect and holy God. And our names are written on each piece of rubbish, each failure, each mistake, each mess up, each bit of rubbish in our lives. And you know what Jesus does? He comes and writes his name over it. He crosses out your name and he signs his name. He crosses out your name and he signs his name. Because of his great love for you, the death and wrath that you deserved have been put on Jesus. The punishment for sin, the consequences of sin, death and wrath, are now Jesus' consequences and punishment. He took them for you so that you could be made alive in Jesus Christ, so that you could receive his grace, so that you could receive his love and affection and adoration. You were dead in your sins and you have been made alive in Christ. Amen. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Holy God, St Matthew reminds us of the privilege of suffering for Christ. We know that to share the work of Christ, we have to share the sacrifice of Christ. Help us when Christianity is hard and to teach us to say to ourselves that when we suffer, we are following in the footsteps of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, 
Look down with love upon your church here in Wortley and Farnley, as day by day we struggle to be a body worthy of Jesus' name. We pray especially for the Christian churches who face daily persecution. Strengthen, comfort and encourage all those who suffer harassment, violence, imprisonment and even death for being followers of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we live in a world becoming more secular and less religious every day. Help us as Christians to stand up for Jesus against world opinion in the sure knowledge that he stands up for us before you, our Father in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, at times your Son offers us hard choices, to choose sometimes between the closest ties of earth and loyalty to him. Free us from making decisions that are for our comfort or for the approval of others. Help us to understand that good choices don't always lead to the easiest outcomes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the sick and the suffering, for those undergoing treatments and surgery, for those convalescing and those who are recovered, that through our intercessions they may all experience a full recovery. As we also pray for those who will not recover, we remember the words of Jesus, that those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, through the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have freed us from the grip of the tomb. We pray for those who have departed this life and ask you, through your loving kindness, to have mercy on their souls and uphold and sustain those bereaved by their passing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, in the week that lies before us, we reflect your love in our families, our church and our community, and in doing so, show everyone we meet that we are followers of Christ with a true desire to draw them into our Christian faith. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we join all our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So a few notices, well, they're the same as they have been. If you don't get our newsletter, do sign up for it uh, online. Um, send us a message and we'll send you the link. Our summer fair is happening on the 8th of July uh, from 11 till 2. So please do come along and join us. We're looking for raffle prizes, tombola prizes and crockery that we can smash. Uh, so please do uh, drop things off at the church uh, so that we can raise loads of money. We're going to finish with our final song now, which is nothing but the blood of Jesus.
nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, oh precious is the flow that makes me snow. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's been wonderful to be able to pray with you and uh, explore God's word in the Bible together. I do hope you have a wonderful week. Let me close with the blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and with you always. Amen. Bye for now. See you next week.